So next to dear in my heart is uh, a person that I shared a, a womb with. Uh, mm -hmm. We hung out in utero, and his name is Jamie Neese, and this will be his first poetry reading. I think it's Jamie Neese. This is, a, this is a man that is not used to having his own personality. He's coming up here, he's pulling the pants off. This is someone I know fairly dearly. Jamie, Jamie Avenues. I only have one poem to read. I don't have a name for it. I'm dressed like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> I thought that was chill for the moment, personally. Um, you awoke this morning feeling nauseous. I just know you did. Unfilled with bravado and youth, and those days that were filled with large dreams and juggernaut confidence had become delayed at the train stop. And that's when we were bailed out. But don't fear, it was abrupt, painless even. You sensed the change immediately. I think, I think we all did. But there were no lightning strikes or red herring, no dictated mission statements, hand rolled by truth could be seen throughout your land, briefed with glazed eyes and teeth whitener. <laughs> I don't have teeth whitener. And when the man you always knew down the street to be fun-loving and adventurous turned sour, and the silver in his beard laps at angled cheekbones, and the morning paper screams, Today has come! It's then. Hope fells you and you whimper sweet melancholy, but there's no song adjusted for this day. Here's the thing. They didn't tell us how hard it would all be. They didn't tell us the hurt that would ensue. Impending foreclosure does on occasion engulf and today it is done so knowingly. But for those days to come, it was slighted truce and angered men marching with swords and poles and kites that cannot find wind for flight. Lovely flowers seem lovely no more, and forget me nots or fuck me lots, and your stomach knots. And it's then, presidential reign will do no longer what we seem to secure so freely of our own accord. We enslave ourselves and we are bailed out. Ticketed cars slingshot upside down near our little friend desperation. And meagerly we watch our silver-cheeked friend from earlier mop floors when equating numbers was his thing. And your mother lives near your refrigerator now, making sure she has not forgotten about it at dinner time. And we are bailed out. <laughs> of the temptations of Maseratis and sugarcane rum, of lavish fabrics against our cheek, we are bailed out of the sashimi nights and of bison burger entrees, sitting hopefully in couch rooms, leisurely thumbing the citrus rind of an orange, wondering over nothing. That's gone too. Bailed out like salty porridge from the dredge of the sea and lathered by sea urchin, stinky by boisterous attire. That's where we are now. And like hated fools who piss on the bed and then leave the room without calling a maid, he bailed out too. <laughs> and of course that maid is hanging by the mop section with a silver beard and together they are weary, no longer answering the bellboy when trouble of bruise. Instead, the incessant ring of the phone goes unanswered. Together, they are poor and will not inherit any of this earth, unless it's inherited depression, the type that makes warts grow freely on your face and zips shut the little girls when they play in the field. Together, they are bailed out in fam of family and friend of the sunny song of bluebirds, overseen by you and me, placated and defiled, shitted on by your children, by our children, without ever even knowing so. And you leave little crumbs by my bed with pleading notes, notes that I can no longer read, and we all know what they would say anyway, and it's no good. It was preposterous, but fucked, but true.